Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Zenith Live 2022. Uh, today, we'll be going over the integration of our digital experience insights into your own ITSM and other uh, platforms using our newly released APIs. Uh, this is our safe harbor statement that I am obligated to show for every uh, presentation. So uh, with Zscaler, uh, users can collect a lot of information with regards to their digital experiences. And these could be internal or external applications. And this allows you to measure if it's your network that is having a problem or the application itself is having a problem. Now we take this data and then further enrich it with system health, software, processes, because all of this contributes to the user's digital experience. Uh, we recently introduced uh, CDX public APIs in limited availability, and we have our uh, API endpoints for specific modules at the moment. These APIs will allow us to integrate with uh, third-party platforms uh, like ServiceNow. Uh, if you're using I uh, ServiceNow as an ITSM, this is one of the best integrations that uh, will enable your staff to get ZDX data into ServiceNow itself and other applications like AIOps or MOOCsOps. You should also be able to augment multiple data sets using ZDX. So you should be able to pull in information from ZDX, put it into an internal application that you have and compare it with other data sets that you have. Today, our API endpoints uh, have uh, five different modules. So one is the authentication and uh, module where uh, everything starts over here. Uh, once you generate a, a secret, <clears throat> you should be able to authenticate and we would re we respond to you with a bearer token. Uh, for any subsequent API calls, you use this bearer token to make sure that you can get the data that you're looking for. Uh, in the report section, we allow you to pull in information for a specific user, application, or device. Troubleshooting will allow you to run deep traces and y engine analysis. And administration is nothing but lookup tables that will allow you to get specific information that will help you further filter down your APIs. Let's look at how our access flow for APIs are structured today. So at first, you will have uh, a new module available in the ZDX uh, UI. We call it the API administration. Uh, what happens over here is you need to create a API key ID and a secret. Now, this is generated by authentication service. And once it is generated, uh, you will be able to access them on the UI itself. Uh, each key ID and a secret is associated with a role. So whatever role you uh, provide this key is what our back controls will be applied to this key and secret. Now, once you have this, you can provide it to your app developer who is maintaining a client app. And uh, the first call that you have to make uh, has to be the authentication call to get the pair token. Now we have an API gateway that will intercept every single API calls. So when you send the authentication uh, uh, to, uh, endpoint with the key ID and secret, the API gateway will intercept it. It will send it to our authentication service. The authentication service will basically check the key ID, the secret, if they are valid or not. And if they are valid, they'll, it'll generate a JWT token and assign, which is signed by a private key. This in turn is then sent to, uh, as a response to the client app. Now, every subsequent call the client app makes will have to be done using a JWT token. The API gateway again intercepts it, verifies if this token is valid or not. And once it's verify, uh, verification is completed, it'll allow you to access the backend to pull in the information that you requested for. Uh, and once the data is ready, we send that response back to you. Uh, to further uh, make our, uh, to make it secure, what we will do in future is also enable our webhook endpoints to be able to use these key ID and secrets so that even the webhooks are secure. Let's look at our API endpoints overview. So uh, as I mentioned today, uh, we have rolled out the authentication APIs. We are also rolling out role, uh, reports related information. Now with reports, we'll be able to pull in information about a uh, users, applications, and devices. Uh, these reports API endpoints are designed in such a way so that uh, they are typically used to pull in a single application or a user or a device when you want more detailed reports. Uh, all of our 
list endpoints uh, would have minimum information so that you will have to call in the detail endpoint to get more information if you need. When it comes to the user details report uh, or the user details page that you see in the CDF platform, the endpoints are uh, designed in a way where you can use a specific endpoint to pull in specific information. We do not have a single endpoint to get every single data point that you see today in the user details page. Uh, with troubleshooting, the APIs will allow you to start and stop a deep trace. When you start a deep trace, we will create an, uh, a, a trace ID and send that back to you as a, uh, in the response. Uh, later, you can use that trace ID and pull another API endpoint to see if the case is complete and pull that information back if you need. Uh, let's look at some of the different integrations that we feel are a possibility with CDX APIs. So uh, with uh, one of the first uh, things that we want to look at is using our APIs, we can pull, pull the information into Logstash, uh, and then you can use uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana to either search and analyze or visualize and uh, manage the data respectively. Uh, the alternative is to basically build an app API client, which is one of the most common integrations that we have seen so far. Uh, with an API client, you can pull in specific information and write that to a data lake or an OLAP application. And once you have that data in, in these uh, services, you can use any, uh, <clears throat> any UI to pull in information from there to visualize the data in dashboards, get insights, set up alerts, et cetera. Uh, we are also exploring more integration with services like AI operations or of or like MOOCsoft or even Splunk. And one of the most important uh, integration that we are currently working on is with ServiceNow. With ServiceNow, uh, using our APIs, we will be able to provide you CDX information right into the ticket. So this way you don't have to provide uh, our support staff with access to CDX, but they can simply get the contextual information that they're looking for within their tickets itself. To further uh, talk about it, we will also allow you to initiate a deep trace from a ServiceNow itself. So when a user creates a, in a ticket within ServiceNow, uh, we will have a relevant information for that user for the last couple of hours. Along with that, the user will also be able to initiate a deep trace. So depending on all of this information, the user can either provide a remediation to the customer or simply escalate it to a higher level of support if they are not able to verify what the issue is or solve what the issue is. Let's take a break and look at the demo over here. I'm going to first bring up Postman. Uh, you can see my screen right now. So I have this set up and I've already ran these uh, API endpoints just to make sure that I do not waste time doing this, but uh, the first authentication uh, token endpoint where you want to send out your key ID and request, we are looking to get a better token. Now, the body is very simple. You are sending the key ID, the secret, and the current timestamp. Yes, our better tokens when you receive are valid for 3600 seconds or one hour. Now, uh, the key secret is not a straightforward secret. We have to convert it to a hash. Now, how do we do it? So you take the current time and your API secret that is generated, you concatenate them, which I am doing it right here. And then you take that concatenated string and create a SHA-256 hash. Once that is completed, you can take the hex uh, of the SHA-256 and use that information to send it out to our authentication service. Once you send out, you will receive a bearer token. And this is, as I mentioned, valid for one hour. Now let's look at one of the other endpoints that I already run over here. This is our apps endpoint. So when you run this, you will get a simple response in a JSON format where you're looking at the application name, the score for that particular application, the most impacted region for that application and the total number of users contributing to that application. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Right. I'm going to go back to a different screen now so that I can talk to you more about how our APIs are designed. 
Now, uh, here's a simple Swagger file that we have uh, for our APIs. And if you, if you look at our APIs, especially the report section, you will see there are three major categories uh, as I explained earlier. You have your applications, you have your users, and then you have all of your devices related information. Now, when you look at our API, uh, the endpoints specifically, just by reading the endpoint, you will be able to identify what information you are expected to get. So here I'm getting the list of all applications. If I look at this particular endpoint, I'm basically going to be getting a uh, information related to a specific application. If I'm looking at this endpoint, I'm going to be getting the score, the ZDX score for that application, as simple as that. Now let's expand one of the app uh, endpoint and see what's going on in the parameter section. So every endpoint expects a from and to parameter because as you can see in the ZDX platform, we provide you information for a specific period of time. The same applies for our APIs. However, we limit it to only two hours of data. Uh, now, if you noticed when I ran the Postman script, I did not provide any from and to parameters at all. And that is how the design of our APIs are. We have designed it to be more forgiving. That is, if you don't provide us any from and to time, we would default to the last two hours. So that way you can simply go and run uh, our API and you will expect to see data, you will get data. Uh, if you look at our ZDX platform, most of the places you have three uh, global filters, your location, department, and uh, active geolocation. All of those filters are also available as parameters over here. And of course you can provide them as an array. So a simple comma separated field will also be available. And we have lookup APIs for location and department as well as active geolocation. So you can always run them, get the required location and department IDs and provide them over here to get response. Now we talked about uh, our uh, integration with ServiceNow. And if you look at uh, the ServiceNow integration, uh, let's see. Uh, so I have some incidents right up over here. I'm going to select a particular user right here. And if you notice, I have a deep tracing button right there. So I can see like what, when I bring up that form, I can provide a unique name for the deep trace. I can select a user over here. Uh, I can say, yes, please collect health related information on the when I run the deep trace. Uh, you can specify how many minutes you want to run the deep trace for. And of course, if you want to, uh, probe a particular application, you can provide that application as well. Now, if you once you run the deep trace, you will see all of the deep trace information right here. Uh, you can click this link to pay, which will take the user directly to, uh, directly to that deep trace session in the ZDX platform. Now, this is our phase one implementation of deep trace uh, or integration with ZDX in ServiceNow. Now, what we intend to do with this is something much larger. So if you are looking at this section right here, we have only one single tab called deep tracing. What we intend to do is basically introduce four new tabs for the integration with ServiceNow. So the first tab is probably uh, is uh, going to be the device performance. So again, I know the user who is over here and for that user, I identified that there were two devices. So depending on what time the ticket was raised, I would take the two hours of that particular data and pull in all of the information that I need for a given device. So I'm looking at all of the personal, uh, I'm looking at all of the personal data for that device. So what's the OS, what's the hardware model, CPU, memory, uh, the tunnel information, what kind of tunnel it was, and then of course, network details over here. Now, if you scroll down, you can see I am getting the last two hours data for CPU usage, Wi-Fi signal, memory usage, disk IO, network IO, etc. And of course, my device events. I can also click on one of these items and see what was the event that happened, what was my previous value, and what was my uh, current value. Now, I can also go into application performance. And if a user had complained about accessing a particular application online, then I can even analyze that. 
So I can go and look, say, customer said that, hey, I was having problem with Outlook online. So I go to Outlook and what I see over here is the CDX score for Outlook for the last two hours and all of the metrics for web probes as well as cloud probes. So you see uh, in cloud probes, I can see the end-to-end -end latency and packet loss. Of course, you can change this over here by selecting whatever metric you want to see. And in the cloud path tab, you will be able to see the entire cloud path as well. Deep tracing is the same. If a deep tracing uh, tracing data is not available, we will simply show you a message that, hey, the deep trace is currently in progress, so we do not have any data for you right now. However, if the deep trace has been completed, you will be able to see all of the deep trace information right here in the ticket. So again, CPU, Wi-Fi, memory, disk, network, events, if there uh, any events happen, uh, top processes uh, by CPU, by memory, by disk IO, by network IO. And of course, if you ran any metric uh, probes or like web probes or cloud uh, path probe for any of the application, they will also be available right here. All right, and last but not least, this is one of, uh, I think, the most uh, important feature that uh, integration that we plan to do with CDX and ServiceNow. So if you remember, recall the Y-Engine uh, demo that Javier gave in the earlier sessions, uh, here we have APIs to run a Y-Engine analysis for a given application for a time range. So again, all you have to do is Select a particular time range that you want to run a Y engine uh, analysis on. Select the device that you want to run it on, and then simply select an application. Once the uh, Y engine analysis is complete, you will get the information right here that basically will show you what were the factors causing this problem that the score did. And based on this information, the support staff can do two things. One is A, provide remediation steps to the user depending on what the factors were, or if they are not, uh, if they do not have the ability to, to give a remediation, they can always escalate it to a higher level of support. So this is the CDX and ServiceNow integration that we plan to roll out in the upcoming months. And that's all I have from our demo. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to us and we will be more than happy to help you out. Thank you. Thank you.